Good afternoon, darlings of God, my fellow mind renovators. Um, I'm excited to do this with you today. Um, just as a re refresher, let's let's go over why exactly we're doing this. Like, what is the big deal about renovating your mind? What is all this mind renovation business, Naomi? Why do you obsess about this so much? Is it really that big of a deal? The, the long and the short answer to all of that is absolutely, it is a big, huge, colossal deal. It's such a big deal that I would dare say that if, you, if one does not engage in mind renovation, um, one will never walk in the fulfillment of the benefits that Jesus purchased for you at the cross. Um, the benefits of your union with Christ and you could live and die as a Christian never experiencing uh, those benefits realized in, in in your life you could live your entire Christian life feeling frustrated feeling angry feeling disillusioned feeling like God isn't actually a keeper of his promises that um, that he loves other people more than you because this person seems to get all the breaks and and brother so and so and sister so and so uh, seem to be more favored than you are and and all of these negative thoughts that uh, none of which are true um, so to avoid all of that can can I can I assume that you would want to avoid that in your life <laughs> To avoid all of that, to avoid disillusionment and anger and frustration and thinking that God has failed you and always always living from one crisis to the next crisis to the next crisis and, and just, just look into the sky waiting for that sweet by and by to finally get here because you're just ready to get out of this place. Um, that is not God's plan. And so... The way, the way, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, the way to avoid uh, living your life that way, having a Christian experience that's so substandard to what God intends for it to be, um, is by renovating your mind. And that's because your mind is the highest part of your soul. Nothing changes in any other part of your soul until your mind is, is changed, until your thoughts come into agreement with the truth of God's Word. And as your thoughts begin to change, then everything else, every other element of your soul, uh, your will, your emotions, your conscience, will begin to come into alignment with your renovated mind. And so... It really is the key. It's the key. It, for, for many Christians, it's the missing key. It's the thing that, that has seemed to elude you all these years for, for how to experience consistent joy, how to experience um, an unshakable peace, how to be like Jesus. You know, Jesus was 100% man. And do you, do you re recall the, the accounting of, of him and the d disciples being in a boat and a storm came up? And it was such a fierce storm that the, his, his disciples were actually afraid for their life. And what was Jesus doing? What was the man Jesus doing? And I, I emphasize that he was a man because um, he didn't do any of the supernatural things he did, he didn't do them as God. He did them as a man full of the Spirit of God, submitted to the Spirit of God. Uh, so what did the man Jesus, what did our elder brother do? How was it that he, in the middle of that storm? Well, he was sleeping, that's what. He was sound asleep. He was so sound asleep that they actually had to go wake him up. Can you imagine being in a boat that's being tossed so fiercely that everybody else in the boat is 
le- le- legitimately and and reasonably afraid for their life and you just be sleeping with no fear no fear at all that's a picture that's a that's like a a a, a an, an analogy it, it really happened I'm not saying it didn't happen but that's a really good picture of how of how we as as the children of God who have been joined unto the Lord who have the indwelling Christ it's a good picture of how we are supposed to be able to live our life upon this earth storms are going to come they are storms are going to come you can't avoid them we have an enemy and he stirs up trouble and and he stirs up conflict and strife and he he pr- provokes this one and that one to say negative things against you and about you and 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 he 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 has people all all throughout the uh the landscape of our lives who are easy pawns even other christians are are many times easy pawns in 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 his hand to to stir up trouble and strife and um and so so storms are going to come trials are going to happen but how you navigate those storms how you respond to those storms how you navigate these these situations that that in the natural would be labeled as a crisis um and i i i add that little caveat because because as far as God is concerned, there's no such thing as a crisis. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? As far as God is concerned, there's no such thing as a crisis. A crisis would a crisis means means we're in trouble. This is this is a crisis situation. God never sees any situation that way, and nothing is hard for God. There aren't easy things and difficult things. There aren't big problems and little problems. It's all easy. And then even beyond that, it's all done. It's all done, finished. So, so I got sidetracked. <laughs> so the the reason that so so we are we have the capability, we have the capability, and it is God's de- desire for us to be the kind of Christians who who can sleep in the boat when it's being rocked by the storm and then rise up rise up and speak to the storm and command it to be still and it actually obey so but but you you won't become that kind of person it, it that that will be a pipe dream it will it will feel like a fantasy like like anybody who suggests that that could p- be possible anywhere within the realm of possibility is is has got to be high on something um is not dealing in reality um but the key to being able to be that kind of christian is to is to apply yourself to renovating your mind changing your thought patterns laying new tracks bringing thoughts into captivity you know the apostle paul said 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 bring every thought into captivity now have you ever thought about the fact that he said bring every thought he didn't just say bring bring some some of your thoughts into captivity every at least every now and then you should bring some thoughts into cap cap captivity when it's convenient for you bring your thoughts into cap captivity no he says bring every thought into captivity you know what that says to me that says to me that the apostle paul understood this this truth very well he understood that 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 everything everything in your life your life experience whether experiencing de- de- defeat or victory whether walking on top the waves or 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 sinking beneath the waves all of it is connected to your thought life all of it is connected to your thought life and so that's why he made such a huge statement and he wasn't trying to put a heavy burden on us he's not he wasn't trying to this apostle of grace you know the apostle paul was the apostle of grace so 
he's not pr promoting a doctrine of, of dead works, of striving. This isn't about works and striving and trying to get God to do something for you or trying to achieve something that hasn't already been finished, trying to become something that you're not. It's not about that. The work is finished. You do have union with, with Christ. Christ is your identity. You are Superman. You are Superman. <laughs> I used that analogy um, in one of my previous um, Re recordings and I, it really stuck with me it was kind of it was a spontaneous thought uh, you, you are Superman that you just need for Clark Kent to get out of the way it, it, Clark Kent is 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 cloaking your real I I, I I did it you need Clark Kent to to move out of the way and stay out of the way but but you have to you have to lay you have to lay tracks new thought so that new trains of thought that are in keeping with with superman thoughts you have to tear you have to rip up you have to rip up clark kent trains of thought um and lay down new tracks that that superman trains of thought can run on so that that will be the direction of your life do you want that I have to believe that if you're tuning in to these re recordings, it's because you are ready, that you're ready. You are sick and tired of being Clark Kent, and you are ready to be Superman more consistently in, in your life. You're ready to be walking on top of the water instead of sinking under the waves and constantly feeling like you have to be rescued. I, I am assuming that that's why you're tuning in, and so if that's the reason, then... Um, then you're tuning in for the right reason, and and if you will, if you will, um, don't grow weary in this well doing. Don't faint halfway through this process. Uh, you will reap. You will reap. Breakthrough will come. Your heart belief will change. Your your will will come into submission to and in agreement with the will of God. Your conscience will start to talk to you in agreement with the truth instead of legalistic, re, re, religious lies. All right. Well, how about we get started? I don't know if I told you guys. I think I've told you this one time before. I'm going to tell you again. Everything I do in these recordings, I don't, I don't re rehearse any of this. I just, this is all just spontaneous. I just speak from my heart and as the Spirit of God leads me. So if sometimes when I'm talking, when I'm doing these, if I pause for a second, it's, it's because I'm listening for the Lord's leading, okay? All right, so I'll make these statements and I'm going to encourage you again to, to say, them, say them out loud. Repeat these things after me. Let your ears hear your mouth speaking in agreement with what God says is true about you. It's very possible that your voice, for many of you, your voice will be the only voice coming into your ears speaking in agreement with, with, this, with, these, spiritual, with these spiritual truths. Your ears need to hear it. Oh, okay? Papa, I am so thankful to be yours. I'm so thankful that you are my Papa. I'm so thankful that I am not an orphan. I'm so thankful to have you as the patriarch of my family tree. <laughs> it's not that I don't love my natural family, but I am so thankful to have another family, to have a new lineage, to have new DNA. I'm so thankful that I am no longer subject to the inferior qualities and tendencies 
that run in my natural family. I'm so thankful that I am no longer I am no longer bound to experience the um, the negative patterns and tendencies that run in my natural family because I have been translated into this kingdom of light because I have been born a second time into your family so you you are the patriarch of my family tree so I I expect to experience in my life day to day so I I expect to experience day by day and moment by moment the benefits of being a part of this family benefits like divine health in my physical body supernatural peace that defies understanding joy unspeakable and full of glory faith that is unshakable faith that causes me to be one who strikes fear in heart, in in fear's heart <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Thank you for, for doing what was necessary, for sacrificing your only begotten Son so that this family could be possible. Lord Jesus, how could I ever thank you enough for what you did as my elder brother you were the firstborn in this family. And you paved the way. You took my punishment so that there is no more punishment for me. You took my shame so that there is no more shame for me. You took my blame so there is no more blame for me. You took my pain, emotional and physical, you were rejected so that I can be accepted. You were de despised so that I can have my enemies even be at peace with me. <laughs> you, you were mocked so that I can be celebrated. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you for my union with you. You are now my identity. And I reject every thought that is contrary to that truth. I am not my emotions. I am not my bad days. I am not the anger or the hatred or the bitterness or the unforgiveness or or the sadness or the depression or any of those emotions that 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 can rise up on the inside of me i am not those things i am who i am in you and i have union with you so I am righteous 100% of the time. In my moments of anger, in my moments of unrighteous anger, in those moments when I don't want to for, forgive and my emotions are, are making a big stink and digging their heels in, I am 100% righteous. And it's all because of what you did. It's all because I have received the gift of your very own righteousness. Because you obeyed perfectly. I have now applied to my life your perfect track record of obedience. So that when, when 
the Father looks at me. He sees me as though I always love, I always am quick to forgive, I never hate, I never hold a grudge, I never, I never deal harshly with my enemies. I always take the high road. I always obey his every prompting. <laughs> I am credited with your perfect track record of obedience. So I am therefore qualified for every benefit, every reward that you earned. You earned your reward as my elder brother and I receive I receive the benefits I receive your reward by grace through faith alone my behavior does not factor in my own obedience my own righteous deeds do not factor in your righteousness is what is what has brought me into this family your righteousness is what keeps me in this family the way that I received you is the way that I walk in you every day of my life there will never be a moment when I can stand before the throne of God and boast in anything other than Christ and him crucified and I submit myself wholeheartedly to that truth. I submit myself to this righteousness of faith. And I deny my flesh bragging rights in my right standing with you. Flesh, you don't get to boast in your good deeds. And you don't get to and you don't get to talk down about yourself in your moments of weakness and failing. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Self-loathing. Self-loathing. You have no place in my life. Self-loathing. You have no place in my life. Self-condemnation. You have no place in my life. If you miss the mark, if I miss the mark a hundred times in a day, self-loathing, self-condemnation has no place in my life. Because my confidence towards God is not about me and what I do. It's about Christ and Him crucified and the imputation of His righteousness in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it. Thank you for this gospel, this radical, scandalous gospel <laughs> that you paid for with your very own blood. I am not ashamed of this gospel. I rejoice and I rest in your finished work. Amen. 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 That's good stuff, you guys. <laughs> it's better than you know. All right. I love you and I thank you for tuning in. Uh, your future self thanks you for tuning in. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.